Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. I think I'm gonna make at least one of you happy this time because this is a moped video. This is the thing with an engine that I have owned for the longest time. I owned this for I think 12 or 13 years now, which is really uncommon. If you know me, you will know that I rarely keep anything more than a year, maybe two. And this one has just sticked around for a long time in many different alterations though, because it has had a lot of different engines through the time. This is not the correct one. This is a 2200 Velosolex, maybe it's a 1700. I'm actually not completely sure about that, but the engine is a 3800. And in a previous video, I actually changed it for a high performance engine with a lot of tuning gears. That means that this got a larger exhaust system, actually quite a lot larger. It got a enlarged carburetor, also quite a lot larger with a adjustable nozzle. And it got a performance barrel slightly larger than normal. Aluminum, not cast iron as it, uh, it's born with. So this is a pretty fast Velo Solex and when... Uh, <laughs> it's not fast, not at all, but it's the fastest Velo Solex that I have ever driven. I think it's capable at around 37 kilometers per hour on a straight road, which is quite impressive, in my opinion at least, because this engine from the factory is actually designed pretty much to handle the amount of power that it comes with. If you really want a lot of speed out of this, you will have to change the roller and stuff like that. I think this could get a lot faster with a bigger roller, for instance, but that's a bit more complicated to do. Anyway, it's not working. The moped is actually running, but not very well. And uh, it was puzzling me a little bit because it seemed to run nice, then bad, then good, and it was all over the place. So I went to check the points, and this is what I found, and uh, pretty sure that's the issue. Right in there we have the points. As you can see, the two screws on the uh, golden colored piece is what fastens the points. So you loosen up those two and then turn the other, the other screw right in there. That is... Um, a cam actually that will move it but on this one take a look at this I don't know if it picks up I'm not sure that it picks up but the problem is that this in here come undone so they are completely loose making the uh, points move while the magneto spins and making the ignition point move. So that is no good. So let's set the points. And there are different ways to set the points, but uh, I'm gonna show you two ways. The main thing is, the main objective is that we have a rupture point right there and a point on the magneto. The engine turns clock, anti-clockwise and you want the spark to uh, to ignite right there when the points align. The way to do that is to make sure that the points open just about there. That will make the spark jump. What I have done in the past and that has worked just fine is to put it around the point, loosen up the, uh, the points and then fit a piece of cigarette paper, very thin paper, uh, launch wrapping paper in between the points and set that so it's just about snug uh, and then if you move it just a little bit it will re release the paper completely then I know the points are opening it around that area let's try to do that so I actually stopped smoking since <laughs> setting points last time so I'm gonna use a feeler gauge 0.02 that's really thin and I'm gonna set the points Right now it's stuck in between the points. Then I'm gonna move the points to the wrap to the rupture point. Now I'm gonna turn the cam in there until it releases. I'd say that's right about there. And I'm gonna tighten up these. That's the way I have been doing it in the past, but there's another way found on, I think it's called Steve Workshop that I have been using ever since. I will leave a link in the description because it's a really clever guide he made in there. But I'm going to show you how he does it and how I'm doing it lately. Firstly, I will remove this nut. 
using power tools like this on stuff like this is really risky. So, so do it at your own risk. Now, this is stuck because there's a keyway. It's a very tight fit, so you can just take it off. Sometimes you can hit it with a rubber hammer and it will come off really rarely. But don't ever use three-point pullers or anything like that. Don't use anything that pulls out here. It will snap in here. I have done that many times uh, when I started working on these. You need the right kind of puller to take this off. The risk of damaging the magneto is way too high, but it's a very simple tool and very, and very easy to make yourself. And it can actually be done this simple. Just a big thick washer with a couple of holes that fits with these holes and something and a knot going through it on the other end and then just thread them. Make sure that they actually get in there a bit. Otherwise they will just pull out the thread, which is not nice either. And then it's just a matter of tightening up this. Sometimes a slight tap helps. Like that. And it comes off. Don't try anything else than this, in my opinion, because it will just snap. So here we go. Now we can access all the timing stuff. What we want to do now is to take this as the ignition coil, this is the light coil. We need to take off this connection right there. Because if we undo this, like this, this part of the points will only be connected to the rest of the engine when the points are closed. So there will be continuity between this part and the engine block when the points are closed. Therefore, we can do this, attach a wire to that point. And then take the flywheel again, or the magneto. Remember there's a keyway in here and that needs to align to the, to the crankshaft, of course. Then we're gonna take this wire and thread it through like this, and then put this one back on. When fitting the magneto, you need to make sure that the felt pad is not being crushed in there, like this. Now we can take our DVOM, I think it's called, put it onto continuity and press this one. That will make these two make a sound when there is continuity. That means if we connect one of the leads to the engine block, just make it touch something on the block like that. Now you can see there's continuity no matter where I touch. And then if I connect this to the wire, we can hear sound. Then when I turn the magneto and the point starts to open, it will stop. Right there. And what you're looking for is for the sound to stop and start right at that point. Sound, no sound. You will notice that it's actually all the way over here. So the cigarette paper thing is not completely precise, but it's close and it will run just fine like this. But I want to fine tune it until we reach it, until it stops beeping at this point rather than this point. Let's try that. Let's loosen up the points. Then we want to close it a little bit. You will notice that the beeping stops at one point from one direction and starts at another point in the other direction. So you'll have to move it a bit about to just find that sweet spot, which is, I'd say it's there now, which is bang on that point, I'd say. So by doing it like this, you will know the spark arrives at exactly the point that the engine is supposed to be firing at, if it's completely standard, of course. So now I'm just gonna take the wheel off once again and 
and reconnect the ignition coil. Like that. And again, use this really carefully because you can strip the, th the thread so easily. You can actually lock the engine by removing that little bolt over there and put in a longer one that will lock up the crankshaft and then you can use a torque wrench. You should really do that. I won't, but I should. And now the ignition timing should be just on point. With a well-adjusted ignition system, a VeloSolex should be pretty easy to start up. It's slightly more complicated when it's a tuned one because of the adjustable nozzle. But normally it should just start up like this. And it didn't. Let's give it another go. So that's back to working. Yes, I need to make a driving video with this at one point because that could be fun. It's just very difficult to film on a moped. Anyway, that's how I set the timing and ignition on a Velo Solex. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.